Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. I'm going to tell you about this amazing new guitar that I've got. I know there's been a lot of questions in recent videos asking me uh, what's going on, where it came from, who made it and all of that sort of stuff. So um, it's a custom built guitar made by Tom Gray at Gray Guitars based in London. Um, I first encountered his instruments at the UK guitar show. I was doing a workshop thing there and uh, just as I was wandering around uh, something grab made me gravitate toward his stand maybe it was chris buck's awesome guitar playing because he was playing on the stand that day um and so i went over and played some of the guitars and and i just thought they were incredible like they feel really beautiful and and uh i got a good kind of feeling from him as a builder and i was looking for a, a new kind of strat style guitar with some other ideas of things that i'd wanted to try out and um so we started a conversation uh i put the order in you know maybe four months ago or something like that took about three or four months to for the build to come through um so i figured in this video i'd just talk a bit about like the the construction the choices that i've made why i made them um and give you some demos of some of the sounds and stuff that it's capable of so the body of the guitar is older i've never really been uh convinced by the different wood sounding different the tone woods thing definitely on acoustic guitars it makes a difference on electric guitars I'm not, it probably does to a small degree but it's never been something that I've noticed that I particularly like one wood over the other so I went for Tom's suggestion here uh, for the older body um, and it's covered with a uh, shell pink nitrocellulose in matte now matte was pretty important choice for me because one of the things that bugged me about a lot of my guitars that i'm playing in the videos is that i get uh, light reflecting either the big light up here or i've got this little side light and if it really glares it kind of upsets the camera a little bit and so it was something that i wanted to really go for a nice matte finish the neck is quarter sawn roasted maple from canada um it's got a little bit of the kind of the flamey thing you can see around toward the headstock but it's not like super duper flamey um, but it feels really nice and I found that the, on my Sir guitars the roasted maple tended to hold its tune a bit better particularly when I'm traveling or whatever um, so I, I was certain I wanted to go for a roasted maple um, I've gone for a I think it's pronounced Pau Ferro sorry if I'm getting that pronunciation wrong um, because of the problem that you can have with traveling with rosewood on guitars now so i thought we'll just bypass that altogether uh feels essentially the same looks the same i prefer a darker fingerboard again for video uh, it doesn't sharp the shadows so much as a, as a maple board does so that was my kind of choice uh, for the fretboard uh, just got standard kind of clay markers except for at the 12th fret where i have my daughter's name inlaid her name is vivianne and so i've got vivi uh there was a couple of funny comments from people saying that they thought i just didn't know how to write 12 in roman numerals but it isn't uh it is uh vivi not 5151 however the name of the guitar because i always name the guitars is little sixes uh, just because V1 is like six and six and I don't know I needed a name and it's a, a little nickname I sometimes call my daughter too so anyway this the guitar's name is Little Sixes the frets are the Stumac 152 frets they're in stainless steel always been a fan of stainless steel uh, any of the guitars that I buy now I tend to unless they're a vintage instrument I try and get stainless steel frets put on them I'd really rate that and while I'm on it the only other thing that's up on the headstock here is I'm using the Spurzel tuners different people seem to like different tuners I, I always found these really you know super easy to use reliable all of that sort of stuff and that's the the most important thing is that they're locking tuners because I can't be bothered with this you know doing loads of winds around the headstock if I can avoid it so locking tuners they're the Spurzel ones uh, in the kind of the matte finish um i think this the the string tree i think is by mastery i'd have to double check on that but it looks real similar to the bridge which is a mastery bridge we'll come on to that in a second as i work my way down the guitar um yeah the little butterflies logo uh is obviously the g and a g for gray guitars flipped around um my mum's a, a butterfly and, and fungus photographer so there was a kind of little tie in there between the daughter and my mum as well so because he's got a new logo going on where it just says grey on it so uh, you might recognise some other grey guitars because it'll have grey written on it or it'll have this uh, butterfly thing um, the nut, I can't remember actually what material the nut was looks like bone to me i suspect it's bone doesn't look very plasticky but i could be wrong so the other kind of big shift i guess for this type of guitar is i've gone for a fixed bridge now um i did debate the idea of getting a tremolo system on there but i never use them i just like i don't even know where any of the whammy bars are for my guitars 
it's you know I'm a big fan of Jeff Beck and that kind of thing, and I like listening to it, but I just don't use it. You know, I I get into a bit of neck wobbling and stuff like that, but I never got into using the tremolo. And I do think that there's a tonal difference between having a fixed bridge, like on a Telecaster to a Strat. There's I think that you know, and I'm never sure with these things. Maybe it's just an, in my imagination, but I feel like it's different. Um, well, actually, and it, it almost certainly feels different because it doesn't lift when you bend a string for sure. So. Anyway, I love it. Uh, this one is a mastery bridge. Um, it's kind of a little bit different with the, the way the, the saddles are placed. There's just two screws, so it's not like you can adjust each one individually, although you kind of can by adjusting the two screws. You can adjust the three. Um, but that said, I've found this guitar to be the most in-tune guitar that I've got. Okay, and that's quite a big deal for me because I'm always finding little quirks between the G string and the B string is something's a little bit out and like tweak and stuff as I go. Um, and I haven't had that with this guitar. Once it's in tune, it's in tune. And I really like that. I really, really, really like that. I don't know how much of it is to do with Tom's great building technique and how much of it is to do with the bridge, but you know, I'm, I'm really digging that. I think I've got the, the name of the bridge here written down somewhere. Um, it's an, a mastery M7 Hardtail is the, the name of the bridge, if that's something that you wanted to check out. Um, the only other thing, actually, before we get onto the electrics, is that I wanted the, the edge output socket, because I just find that the strap one just poking out the front just cumbers them in the way, and, and I tend to use these right angle jacks anyway, so normally it'll just fold over the strap. So um, keeps it out of the way. I, I've always been a fan of that on a, on a strap type guitar, if I can. So. So let's talk a little bit now about the electrics because they're pretty interesting, I think. Um, I've gone obviously for something that looks a little different. We've got a humbucker, a single coil, and a Filtertron type pickup, um, which is already a pretty rare combination for a strap, but there's some other interesting things going on as well. So the first thing which was on one of the guitars of Tom's that I played at that trade show is a humbucker that's splittable into a single coil via the use of the tone control. So it's kind of blendable. So I can have now, for this, I'm just literally going straight into the Victory. I've bypassed my effects pedal board. I'm going into the Victory amp, it's going into the Oxbox, and then it's going into Logic Audio. So it's pretty straight. Um, so with the tone control kind of roll back to one, the humbucker is a single coil. <laughs> really kind of pingy single coil sound. When I roll the tone control up full, now we've got like a big deeper humbuckery sound. Now that's something that I've had before. I've had humbuckers that are splittable, but I again I don't know if it's to do with Tom's magic touch in the wiring stuff or whether it's down to radio shop who made the pickup so big shout out to radio shop pickups uk based uh, custom pickup maker uh, they made all three of these pickups and have uh, custom wound them so that they're kind of like a matched set um i think that they were introduced to tom via chris buck who's a fantastic guitar player if you've not heard him but in fantastic sound so um, you know, I think he's helped develop at least this middle pickup. I think is he was somehow involved with the development. Anyway, it it works great, and I, at this point, I haven't found much use for any middle ground. So I'm either using it as a single coil or as a humbucker. But I suspect that a single coil with a little bit of the humbucker thing is going to have a place. I'm just still trying to figure out where where that place is, because it's not the sort of sound that we can normally access. We normally have single coil or humbucker, not in between. So again, so here's a humbucker. Sorry, here's the humbucker. I was like, that doesn't sound right. Quite chunky. Less output, a little bit spark, more sparkle, but just to creep a little bit of it. kind of comes on pretty quick. I'm not hearing a whole heap of difference between like three and 10, but that first part, maybe we need to tweak the tone a little bit so it's slightly more gradual, but yeah. Anyway, that's something that I'm still exploring a little bit. 
Um, of course, the other interesting thing here is, is splitting it. So now in pa uh, that's position five pickup selector just on that. If I move it to position four, which is the single middle single coil and the bridge together, we can obviously have single coil and humbucker or single coil and single coil. So uh, single the two single coils, um, you know. <laughs> I really like that kind of slightly out of phasey sort of. It's got it's got it going on. It's, it's a sound I I really like and I use a lot. With it in humbucker mode. It's still there. So it's kind of, there's some interesting things going on there because the, with the humbucker it's a, a lot thicker. I've never had that before. Whenever I've had a humbucker single single uh, in position four, it's been a split humbucker with the middle. So it's kind of, there's some interesting things going on, there, interesting sounds. So position three is obviously just the middle pickup. <laughs> not a sound that I use a whole lot to be honest but in this combination I'm starting to explore it a little bit more than I might have done before which is kind of interesting. Um, if we move to position two we've now got the middle uh, pickup and the filtertron. Now let me explain the filtertron thinking a little bit. So I've always loved the sound of filtertron pickups. They're, they feel a bit kind of lo-fi to me in a nice way. And I'd never heard that in a Strat. I was tempted really to just get a couple of Filtertrons and that was it, but I think this is a more interesting combination. It's, it's kind of... It's a bit thicker than a single coil. It's still round, possibly a bit too round. I'd kind of like to brighten that up a bit. I'm not sure how I can go about brightening that up other than with the amp, and if I brighten it up on the amp, then the bridge gets too bright. But anyway, that's a different story for another time. But the idea was to have this different front end sound, you know, in the neck position where I could explore just some other tonal options. Um, mixing those two together is, again, that's an interesting kind of a sound, having the single coil here with the filter trying Again, it's just... It's got a nice thing going on there. So if I take you through the, the controls now, the volume is just the volume, nothing fancy going on. It's just a straight volume. It's got the little uh, um, high pass filter thing going on it so it doesn't lose the top end as you roll it off, which is a fairly standard or should be standard thing on a volume control. So the second knob down is a master tone control. So whatever pickups are selected, it'll adjust the tone for, increasing the bottom end, rolling off the top or whatever. Um, it's also a push pot. So if I push it in, it pops up and it adds the front pickup to whatever I've selected. So if I'm on the middle pickup and I do that, then it's essentially the same as those two together. These two, it's not gonna make any difference on that. And here it's going to, if that's up, it's gonna sound the same as the as position two. The idea of it was when I was in position four that I could pop it up and have all three pickups running. But to be honest, I'm not really sure I've found a place for that yet. So I'm still exploring it. I haven't had the guitar that long and there might come, I'm not gonna change it just yet because I'm still kind of finding my way around. There might come a time where I think that that's a great thing. It's definitely not working for me on a dirty sound. It just seems to, or even a crunchy sound. <laughs> It just seems to kind of muddy it a little. But there could be times where that becomes pretty cool. I'm not sure, maybe with a fuzz pedal. Um, you know, it, it, it is early doors. Uh, most guitars that I have, I need to spend a bit of time really exploring what they can do and how they interact with different pedals in different situations. Um, I'm just about to start work again on doing a, a record. Um, and so I'm hoping that some of these creative options or exploring these elements of the guitar might lead into interesting places in the songwriting process and or sounds or whatever so i quite enjoy having access to these 
um, other sounds. The only other thing I thought I should mention about the guitar that's kind of special is the contouring. It's it's really beautifully contoured. The 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 back here is really smoothed out well. The the holes for the the screws that go into the neck are countersunk. So it just feels everywhere really smooth and sexy. It's like it's really nice. It just there's it it's been beautifully made. It feels super comfortable to hold. The weighting of it is nice. Headstock's a little heavier maybe than on some of my other straps, but not in a bad way. It feels very balanced and comfortable. It's not kind of leaning backwards or forwards or it's just nice. It it's yeah, it's really, really beautifully made guitar. And if you're looking for a custom build, I really can't recommend Tom highly enough. You know, really, really nice guy, which counts for a lot. Wonderful builder. Um, I know Anderton stocks some of the guitars, so if you're after something like a, a kind of a stock build that you can buy off the shelf without the weight, that might be something to check out as well. Um, so I thought just before we finish, I might just play through a few things just and, and try and kind of show you some of the sounds and, and, and what's going on here. Um, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video about my new guitar and you're going to enjoy hearing her for many years to come. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>